On my recent video about this EasyCap style generic video capture device, I used real world test signals from a VHS and a DVD. Now those are good reference materials, but they're a little bit subjective. So today I'm gonna use this DVD, Sound & Vision Home Theater tune-up that has test signals, video test signals on it. And I'm going to use this NAB Broadcast Audio System Test CD that has audio test signals on it. And throw in a few extras like these color bars here to see more objectively how this EasyCap device performs. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. You may have noticed that this video is framed differently and has different resolution than most of the videos I upload and that's because I wanted to match the native resolution of this EasyCap device. Now I can do PAL or NTSC but I'm going to be doing NTSC converted to 480p. Now NTSC is normally 480i, DVDs are normally 480i so there is going to be some conversion taking effect but uh, 480i to 480p shouldn't be too big a deal and I have to go progressive scan anyway because YouTube is strictly progressive scan. For this demonstration I'm using my Magnavox VCR slash DVD recorder and there's a few things in the setup I want to adjust. For my disc audio I want to be PCM that's pulse code modulation. 48,000 Hertz is fine for the PCM. On the Dolby Digital, I want to also set that to PCM. For disc audio, I want to turn off dynamic range control because that will affect my audio tests later on. Okay, on the video menu, I want to turn progressive scan off and that's because I want my video capture device to be doing the scan conversion. I want my TV aspect at 4x3. I'm going to select 4x3 pan and scan. And that's all the menu items I need to adjust. To get the most out of these video tests, I would recommend viewing in a full screen mode, not just a little window on a YouTube browser. Let's start with color bars. This will tell me if my black level is correct, if my gain is too high, and if my chroma saturation and phase are correct. First, let's look at the source color bars. We are now looking at color bars that have been captured by the EasyCap device. Here are the color bars captured by S-Video. Here are the color bars captured through composite video. I'm going to cycle through these one more time. Source, S-Video, composite video. The test patterns on this DVD are designed to adjust hue, saturation, contrast, brightness on a CRT television. But a lot of these test patterns can also be used to see how good a job my video capture device is doing. I'm going to let them explain some of these tests and hope for the best as far as copyright goes. Take a close look at the pattern on our shirts. It's strictly black and white, but if you see colors in this pattern, it's technically called moray. This test pattern will reveal potential moray problems with a composite video signal. Right now you are looking at the source test pattern. I'm going to switch to S-Video and see if there's any problems with that. Now you're looking at the same pattern through S-Video. Look where the lines get real close and see if you can see any color. Now we're looking at the composite input and seeing if there are more color artifacts. I only see black and white artifacts. A contrast test will let me see if the peak levels are set too high on this capture device. Here is the source contrast test pattern. Here is the S-Video capture of that same test pattern. Here's the composite capture of this test pattern. One of the things I noticed during my previous video about this capture device is the black level was set too high. The brightness test from this DVD should demonstrate the issue. 
The next adjustment is brightness, sometimes called black level. If the brightness is set too high, the picture gets washed out. If it's too low, you'll lose detail in the shadows. The pattern for adjusting brightness is called a pluge pattern, which is demonstrated here. It's very simple to use. Keep an eye on the screen as we adjust the brightness. When the brightness is turned up, you can see two moving bars in the black area doing a kind of line dance from side to side. When the brightness is turned down too low, they both disappear into black. The goal is to find the brightness setting where the left bar has disappeared and the right bar is just slightly visible. Here is the source black level test pattern. If your monitor is adjusted properly, you should just see one bar moving left and right. Here is the S-Video capture of that same test pattern and I can clearly see both bars moving left and right. Here is the composite capture of the black level test signal and it is a much closer match to the original source test signal. In fact, let's go back to that original source signal. Brightness and contrast can both be adjusted during the editing process. But if your capture device loses detail and softens images, there's no way to get that back. The best way to test this is with the sharpness test. Here is the source sharpness test signal. Pay particular attention to the right side of the screen where the vertical lines are real small and real close together. Looking at this same test pattern as captured through S-Video, it has some issues in the upper right and the lower right with those fine lines bleeding into one another. Here's the composite capture. It's a little better than the S-Video, but not as sharp as the source. Let's go back to the source briefly. The color tests require this special filter to do them properly. I can't really send this out to all y'all. So I'm going to skip the color test. It's time to move to audio. This DVD is designed for Dolby Surround and DTS Surround audio. But there are a few tests I can use off of this to check my audio. Let's start with the front left and front right audio tests. When doing a left channel audio test, you should be hearing white noise coming out of the left channel. Here is the source signal. Here is what got captured using that source signal. The noise that was supposed to be coming out of the left channel was coming out of both speakers, so it appears that the left channel was mixed to mono. Let's see if the right channel has the same problem, starting with the source noise. Now let's listen to what got recorded. I can verify that the channels are being mixed together by using a speaker phase test. When one of the channels is out of phase, the audio should cancel itself out. And I found another problem. Both the left and right channels have a significant DC offset. This limits dynamic range and can cause pops when editing this audio with other sources. I found several audio problems with this DVD and I haven't even gotten to this NABCD yet. The only thing I really want to do from this is the frequency sweep. Now that would take a full minute 40 seconds to go through the whole thing. So I'm just going to listen for problem areas and include those. This waveform is suffering from the same DC offset as earlier and at the higher frequencies the waveform tapers off. This means it has high frequency loss. This series of tests has caused me to reevaluate my $11 EasyCap device. Video is okay, especially the composite video, S-Video not so much. But the audio is pretty terrible, mixing left and right stereo into mono and putting a DC offset on it. I would like to thank Vince S who listed this Sound and Vision DVD for trade on Swappa DVD. I could not have done this video without this. 
Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.